welcome back. A double rapist to Scotland named Adam Graham was sent to a woman's prison last week after transitioning into a woman named Isla Bryson at the beginning of his trial. The rapist has now been moved and the Scottish government has belatedly announced a pause on the transfer of violent trans inmates to women's prisons. But Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon is still struggling with this issue. Take a look at this. Are all trans but women women? You haven't is... answered that question. Well, that's not the point that we're dealing with That's here. That's the question I'm asking. Trans women are, are women, but in the prison context, there is no automatic right for a trans woman. So there are contexts where a trans woman is not a woman? No, there is, <laughs> there is circumstances in which a trans woman uh, will be housed in the male prison estate. Is there any the context in which a woman born as a woman will be housed in the male estate? Look, we're talking here about trans women. And I'm now asking about women born as women. Uh, I don't think there are circumstances there. Uh, but so it's different for trans women? Well, yes. And I, I'm not... So they're not equal? That is not... The, there is a risk assessment process done for trans women. I mean, it's complete and utter gibberish. And this is what happens when, when the woke mindset runs riot. This is where it leads into complete and utter insanity that can't be explained, even by the people spewing it. Well, joining me on uh, today's pack, Talk TV contributor Esther Cracker and broadcaster Jenny Cleman. I'm glad to be joined by Daily Wire columnist and the man behind the smash hit film, What is a Woman, Matt Walsh. Matt Walsh, uh, I mean, every time I think this can't get more absurd, this simple question, in terms of a response from women, we get something like that where a leader of a country, Nicola Sturgeon, the leader of Scotland, simply incapable of explaining why, if trans women are women, then they have to be kept in male prisons. Yeah, I mean, if they weren't such frauds and cowards, you'd almost feel sorry for them. They backed themselves into this corner, and they're left, they're left with, as you said, absolute gibberish, uh, because that's the, that's the fundamental incoherence. At the bottom of gender theory, it's totally incoherent, and all you have to do is ask some basic questions, and that's revealed. And by the way, this idea of, well, we'll do a risk assessment. Well, look, if, it was, uh, if there are female prisoners... Uh, even very dangerous, if there's a, an actual female prisoner who was larger and stronger, um, you'd have to do a risk assessment there, but there'd be no thought about whether that prisoner goes to a woman's prison or not. Right. Obviously, that prisoner is going to be a woman's prison. Um, right. So I mean, uh, I think, reason... you know, in a way, this, this case has really exposed this whole issue, actually, in the most sharpest possible way, because even this rapist's ex-wife came out and said he never mentioned any of this stuff when they were married for eight years. And she thinks he's invented the whole transitioning simply to get himself a cushier uh, place in a woman's prison, where, of course, he would then be able to prey on women, which is what he's done before, which is why he's a convicted rapist. And I say he because yeah, I just I... don't believe that he's a genuine transitioner at all. I think he just scammed everybody, including the legal system. Yeah, and I think he is right. And by the way, even if he was a, quote, genuine transitioner, I'd still call him he because uh, he means man. That's what he is, no matter how he feels about himself. I do think it exposes something because at the heart of this debate, whether we're talking about locker rooms or sports teams or prisons, it's always a question of, first of all, what is a, quote, unquote, trans woman? How do you define it? But then also you have these competing claims. You have the, you have the, uh, the, the, the quote, unquote, trans person who says that, well, if you don't do as I say, it's going to make me feel bad about myself. But then you have all the other people who are affected who say, well, if you let them do what they want, then we are going to be unsafe. And when you, when you translate this over to a prison and you're talking about putting violent predators and sex offenders in with, with, with women, because if you don't, the, the violent predator will feel bad. Yeah, it's, well, it's, it's like, OK, well, we can... It's mad. Yeah. It's mad, as is the whole sporting thing, where you have six foot three inch swimmers pulverizing women born to female bodies in the pool and breaking all women's records potentially irrevocably. Jenny, can you defend any of this? I mean, I think it's a really stark example of where this begins to fall down because prisons are binary and sex is binary. Gender is not binary. Right. Gender is a is a continuum, but but sex is binary. And whilst there is a kind of drive to be inclusive and to be welcoming, it gets to a certain point where when you're conflating gender and sex, when you have a situation where it's either a male prison or a female prison, that's where this all throws out. I'm not going to try and, and defend you any agree of with me, blimey. <laughs> Esther, I know, um, it feels very we're weird. We're turning the wonkies <laughs> in real time here. My, my point about it is I think the way you try and introduce you know, limitless mm. self-identity of any kind, yeah. this is where it goes, yeah. right? It goes to insane places, which are actually dangerous. This yeah. is dangerous. But it's also state overreach, and I feel like no-one's pointed this out, because the, 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 the state is not in the business of 
I'm sorry, accommodating the, the, the needs of trans identifying prisoners. That's not their business, right? You can feel how you want. Like you said, prisons are binary and they're binary for a reason. I went to a gym this afternoon. I was in the female gym showers. I can't imagine a person born with a penis, i.e. a male, being in there. It's horrifying. So I, I, I think even the fact that, you know, people feel like it's the government's business to accommodate trans prisoners is completely preposterous. Well, the thing That's that I absurd. would like to know is I would like to know where trans men go to prison. Nobody's talking about that. Because are there any trans men in No one talks about trans men in men's prison sports? or men's prison. Do we talk about trans men in men's sports? Do we talk well, about no, trans men in That's a different thing. In, it's not a different no, thing because they don't exist. To it doesn't work they the same way. It doesn't yes. work the same way because, because biologically, they, because, they don't exist. Because biologically, exactly. the issue only works one way. Thank you. Right? Biologically, in a swimming pool or sprinting or whatever it may be, people born to male a... bodies have an advantage yeah. over female bodies, predominantly, almost exclusively. Right? But Which is no why we separate the sexes at the Olympics and things. There's no advantage with I mean, it's not even an advantage, though. They Genuinely wouldn't exist. Know where they where would trans men go to prison. And that would kind of really shed light on all of this issue. OK, they? And well, you mentioned gyms, uh, Esther. And when we come back, we're going to talk to, to Matt and then you guys about this new extraordinary viral digital craze of women shaming men for looking at them in the gym. Well, a recent poll said more than half of men fear being labelled creepy for talking to women. So-called digital influencers like Jessica Fernandez might be partly to blame. Tens of millions of people watched a video she uploaded from a gym where she claimed a, quote, feral man was staring at her. Well, Fernandez has since apologised, but thousands of similar videos are circulating to huge audiences. Well, back with my pack. And first of all, Matt Walsh, I mean, you've been following this, Matt. It's a quite extraordinary trend where, from most of the videos I've seen, where people are claiming this is appalling behaviour, it's just blokes in a gym looking at people. I mean, but not in any way that I would describe as predatory or unpleasant. No, of course not. This is the trend, is women, for whatever reason, are recording themselves at the gym. That's the first problem, is if you want to record yourself working out, maybe stay at your home and do that. But then it turns out this is really a cover to basically entrap men who might glance over in their direction. And by the way, there's, there's a lot of reasons why somebody might glance at you in the gym. Maybe one reason is they find you physically attractive. God forbid. Uh, it might also be that, I don't know, you're hogging equipment. Maybe you... There's equipment that you're using while you're filming yourself and muttering to yourself like a schizophrenic, and they want to use that equipment, so they're kind of lingering around so they can use it. Those are all kinds of reasons, but this is this ultimately is why men are paranoid in just opening a conversation with a woman. Yeah, I mean, look, I get, look like obviously, they, I get it the other way. I've started going back to the gym, and I get a lot of very hot women, obviously, almost fainting on sight when they, see the, when they see the big guns coming out. But... Um, is, it, is this a serious... I mean, what is going on here, Jenny? I think a lot of women feel that they're being stared at at the gym or having their phone... A lot of the, the footage Good. that's going around is people having their Means photographs taken. But aren't you going to a gym to make yourself look aesthetically more You're pleasing? You're going to the gym to exercise. But why would you... Even if a man's looking the gym at you, you know, like, wow, you look hot, not, what, why would that be wrong? Isn't a, that what you want to A gym is not a bar. A gym is not a dating app. It's not going to a gym for many people. Yeah, well, exactly. I, I think a lot of women just Listen, want to exercise. Listen, I've heard of many romances that started at the gym. Look, the thing is, I think we're being too clinical about this. People meet in all sorts of different settings. Again, like Matt said, you could look at someone because their form is... I don't want looking at me when I'm exercising. Well, that's you. I very much like to be complimented, looked at, <laughs> asked out. That's great. <laughs> If anyone is listening, but you know the thing is, they could also be looking at they could also be looking at you because your form is off, right? They could be looking at you because you're be hogging. Look, them. Do you look at other people at the gym? Yes, if, yeah. Form? If you're hogging, if you're I hogging, think you're quite sorry, unusual. This is, this yeah, is the point. I mean, Matt Walsh, this is the thing. When I go to the gym, I don't think you can avoid looking at people because I'm looking at them to see what their forms like, yeah. how they're carrying certain weights, are they carry more than me? You know, male or female, I don't really care. I'm just I'm quite curious about other people using a gym. Am I now going to be suddenly appearing on Instagram? Influence, influencers' sites is some sort of perv? Well, it's possible. And look, by the way, I also I don't mean to be a victim blamer here, but but can we also say that if, you, if you're a woman and you don't want to, you don't want men to notice you in the gym, maybe wear more than your underwear to go work <laughs> out. I mean, that's the one thing. These women in these videos, they're wearing sports oh, bras goodness. and like, Hot pants. I mean, how about put some clothes on if you don't want people to look at you? This is victim blaming. Yeah, and well, I'm sorry, I'm going to I'm going to quote Come Margaret Atwood, Atwood here that uh, men are afraid of women laughing at them. Women are afraid that men are going to kill them. It is not okay to, to say that it's and a it woman's gym? fault for wearing the wrong you thing. You think the people looking over at people some using you know, some equipment in the gym are going to kill them? I think that taking photographs is threatening. Staring at people is threatening. But the ones and photographing are, it are these Instagram are influencers. No, they're who not. Are videoing they are, they are videoing men taking photographs. Of them and Final at word, Esther, have we lost our minds? Um, yes, we have lost seconds. our minds. Uh, men, please ask away. Uh, don't be tamed <laughs> by this boring attitude. Matt Walsh, <laughs> thank you. Back, thank you.